It is Thursday, August 20th, and it is day 156th of the San Francisco Stay in Place order. This week, we're going to move up to the cervical spine. Now, we've covered in the past few weeks the lower back the lumbar spine, the middle of the back, the thoracic spine, and we've also last week covered how to help the body or trick the body to correct the kyphotic state or the rounding of your shoulders or the rounding of the mid-back. So check out last week's video to gain some insight on how we do that. But this week, let's focus on the cervical spine and how we move the real bones and create relative motion. Now I'm not going to cover all of real and relative motion, I covered that a few weeks back, but for the spine and more specifically the cervical spine, we have the bone that sits on top of another bone is the superior bone and the one below is the inferior bone. So our objective is to create motion between these bones and create a relative um, motion or create real movement with these bones and create a relative motion in between those two vertebrae. Now that relative motion is where the pressure occurs. So for example, the superior bone, if it's driven, uh, if it moves first, then everything is in the direction of the superior bone. If the inferior bone is moving first or faster, then everything is the opposite direction or opposite pressure of the inferior bone, okay? Now, what I'm gonna share with you this week and why is that we want to load and explode the connective tissue or the tissue related to the superior and inferior bones so that we can basically create a stretching routine or tuning routine or lengthening and shorten routine or load and explode, create motion that will help break up any buildup or we could call it fuzz, any buildup that will occur in the connective tissue. So we want to make it more active and keep it fluid. This is how we create that fluid state, make it more fluid by loading and exploding in all three planes. So we want to go forward, sideways, and we want to rotate. And that's how we keep all of the connective tissue fluid and healthy as we move all the bones in real space and we create relative joint motion based on opposing bones, the speed of opposing bones, whether they move at the same time, one moves faster than the other, et cetera. Now, in the demonstration, I'm gonna show you how to do something that we call a zombie. And it's a matrix where we're gonna go through all three planes. We're going to go forward, sagittal plane, sideways 90 degrees frontal plane and 135 degrees in the transverse plane. We're going to use our arms as the primary drivers, eyes as a secondary driver. Well, actually, no, we're not going to use eyes as a secondary driver this time. We're actually going to fix our eyes forward so that they don't move. What we're attempting to do is to move the cervical vertebrae to create a loading and exploding of the soft tissue. So we're gonna create basically a pumping system. And in between the superior and inferior bone is that relative joint motion where we gain the pressure to help clear up in between the joints. So as I said earlier, when the superior bone moves, that's the direction of the relative motion. And when the inferior bone moves faster than the superior bone, then the relative joint motion is in the opposite direction. So this is what the matrix looks like. We start off with our hands in front. We're going to lunge forward, okay? And as we lunge forward, we're gonna rotate our trunk so that our waist turns, crossing the forward leg. Come back, 
We're going to step out 90 degrees and do the same thing. Then we're going to step 135 degrees, turning our hip and rotate the trunk. Okay, so let's put it together. I'm just going to do one side. You will want to do both sides, three to five cycles each. So this is what it looks like. Notice I'm keeping my eyes fixed at zero degrees. That's allowing the bones to create that relative motion, relative pressure to help clear up the cervical spine or to break up any buildup or gunk that's in the connective tissue, basically stretching them out and allowing them to come back or loading and exploding. So let's go ahead and do a full cycle of what I want you to do and then we can call it. Okay, here we go. One more time. And that's pretty much it. So go ahead and add that to your tuning routines that you do every day. And remember, you don't have to do everything. Just figure out what works best for you to keep you fluid. Now you have some insight as to how you, the, the steps you can take to keep your neck, your cervical spine tuned. This is just one strategy. Now I recommend that you perform this about three to five cycles. So remember you're going forward, sideways, and rotating. And make it a habit. You can do it every day. I do it every day. So that's pretty much it. Now it's Monday morning for you when you first see this. And if no one has told you just yet how much they appreciate you this morning, then let me be the first to let you know that I appreciate you for taking the time to watch my video. Have an excellent day and a great week, and we will touch base next time. Ciao.